Okay, here we are in a gravel pit um, near the base of, of the fan, same fan we've been looking at. Uh, the, um, the recent debris flow, we, we spent plenty of time on that. Um, pretty small potatoes compared to some of the, the debris flows that um, make up the surface, the debris flow units, different alluvial fan units, as well as ones that are exposed in, in section, like in a, a gravel pit here. So we're going to walk up to a, um, a section that I did a little bit of work on. Um, I don't, well, don't have all my tools with me, but get the idea, I suppose. So the t this section here, there's this fine-grained kind of massive unit, about a meter thick or so, and um, it's capped by a poorly sorted angular matrix-supported debris flow unit, and that makes up the uh, surface of the alluvial fan here. So, at least in this part, and, and I suspect that this particular unit uh, covers a, a large percentage of the fan. I don't have the geology maps um, or the, the maps that I've been doing here uh, with me. So, um, what is this stuff? Well, let's walk around this corner here. And again, there's... I don't have any scale. So, I'll just do this. This is debris flow up here. Um, the base of that unit is right here. Here there's some thinly bedded silts and sands. Um, maybe these, uh, these fine grained deposits beneath the debris flow were ponded behind a, um, a beach ridge here and maybe that's what they were going after in this gravel pit and not the, the alluvial fan deposits. Um, so these, this fine grained stuff looks like um, Looks like stuff that's been ponded behind a, a beach ridge, like in a little lagoon. And it's not debris flow because it's fairly finely bedded. There's some, um, well, we have this massive unit. This could be debris flow slurry, just like um, the one we've been looking at today. And kind of um, and ponded in a little closed depression behind a, a ridge. And beneath that, there is this interesting deposit that it's kind of messed up. There's a lot of burrows in it, um, but you can kind of get the general gist of where, what it is. It's fine grain um, stuff. There's a lot of organics in it. Um, you can see these little layers here. Those are little hunks of charcoal that make it black. And so I picked out some of this charcoal a little while ago and sat it in for a radiocarbon date. Here's a nice little piece. See how black that is? That's, that's pretty nice charcoal. So that would give you a nice date, and this is uh, kind of a burn layer. And you can kind of see this, whoops, more spider webs, all the way over into here. Um, there's just a bunch of coherent layers, and so if you're going to collect carbon here, basically you have to be very careful because there's a lot of little roots, and you don't know if these roots were from the surface and they got into this fine grain layer, and, and um, modern roots I'm talking about, and move laterally, or they were just growing in this particular unit when it was at the surface. But these layers here that are chalk block full of charcoal and other debris, organic debris, are really nice uh, radiocarbon date targets. So it turns out I, I just got that date back um, last week. And it's something like 670 or 700 years old, which um, is you know fairly young. That's, that's late Holocene. And it sort of makes sense to me, because I'm, I'm going to scan down here. And down here, underneath all this, this white stuff, this is a volcanic ash. This ash came from the Mono Craters. Uh, it's relatively coarse here. I mean, it, it's, not quite, it's, it's not quite proximal, because the Mono Craters are maybe 50 or 70, excuse me, 50 or 70 kilometers from here. I don't know, I'm just guessing about that. But there's, we're somewhere around 1250, 1255 meters here in elevation. And that's the same elevation as you find um, a tephra in Walker River deposits that grade right into a lake deposit. So you know that the lake was up at around 1250 or 1252 meters 
when that tephra was deposited and that tephra over there is dated to just um, younger than 760. These are all radiocarbon ages. I'll figure out the calibrated ones later. And so because there's a little bit of time separating this tephra and as you scan up this layer right here, you know, if it was 50 or 70 years younger or something than um, the 760 year date that's right beneath the tephra, but in a different location, it's over there, um, it could make sense. Stay tuned.